everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Kirby Triple Deluxe. Last time, we continued down Royal Road with a boss rush. And then continued on with a rush of all the hypernova sections. And this time, it continues on with another boss rush. I hate, 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 hate to say things like this. I really do. I don't use the word hate for very many things, but if I ever do, it's usually for things that I don't like saying. And it's that it feels like they ran out of steam with this game. The rest of it was actually perfect. Like really, really good. Great levels, really got me hooked. Great music, good variety of Kirby power-ups. Speaking of which, we're using one for the first time right now in any great capacity, and we're finally gonna get to see it. The level theming was phenomenally good. Uh, these guys are so cute. I can't say that they lost the plot of it too much with them around and... Okay, I had to headbutt it to death. Gosh, uh, Kirby now has bug guts on his forehead. I'm so sorry. Yeah, they had it really good for a long time. Excellent music, great atmosphere. The background art was incredible. Graphics with 3DS standards were great. You had some really wacky power-ups. The gameplay was fantastic. It was a little on the easy side. The boss fights were super creative. And then this last world gets off to such a strong start. And then it devolves into just rehashes of previous areas. I don't like that. I really don't. And it's such a shame too, because it was just so good otherwise. And I guess no game can be perfect. We all got to have the Bionis interior and the uh, paying for your insolence of every game now, don't we? Uh, that's the ground dash attack for beam. It has a lot more reach on it than a standard beam does and it con concentrates your damage really well. And oh my god, they're bugs. Wormholes is what they're traveling through. <laughs> Petra! As with the previous boss rush, these are the same fights as before. Even the same descriptions if you paused the game, in case you wanted to know about that. And it's just pretty much all the same, except they just have less health. Just watch out for Painter's patterns as you did before. Uh oh. Okay, I guess we'll just attack you right there. What else can we do with this? Wow, only two more abilities that we haven't seen. This has a grappling attack, meaning that you can make good use of it. When throwing, it'll also do a laser, causing it to do a bit of extra damage on top of what you would normally get from using the star. So good power-up to use on bosses for that reason. I was actually really scared that I lost the power-up and couldn't see where it went. We're on to phase two. I need to be a lot more careful not jumping up near her. I can just get some nice cheap damage right now in this cutscene. There's that. Boop! Not, not quite. Doing these paint bubbles. And then a slash. Cover in the screen. Oh, you're painting stuff in the background now. Oh, I can hurt you during this! She's actually hurtable during a lot more of her moves than you would expect. I don't think we saw that one before. The bosses don't have any new attacks, unfortunately, so nothing there. And she also doesn't hurt me if I touch her during this, too. That's a really opportune moment. Whoop, 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 whoop. Need to stop jumping around once again. Okay, there's the paper. Not that time. Not close enough to get her that time. Not close enough that time either. You can't really walk while grappling, so that kind of sucks. Okay, I don't get hurt during this, so I can just use my favorite attack all willy-nilly. She hops away. Oh, uh, I wasn't really paying attention to it because I thought I was gonna get her. That's kind of bad. Anytime you want to die. This is part of why I don't like beam that much, personally. It's very mid-damage, whereas I really like the high damage stuff like hammer or fire. Those paint splatters are her blood in her forever tomb. Into the wormhole. there's a bit of originality here where we get to play through a place that we haven't gone through yet. Uh, that gives Archer should you want that, but I think we'll stick with Beam now because it was available all the way back in the first level and we still hadn't used it. 
Uh, beam, if I can go into its utility a bit, it doesn't really have much. It's just that it can reach through walls, sort of like Whip does. It is actually a little bit similar to Whip and its stuff. It just doesn't grab items, uh, grabbing stars instead, which I think Whip can also do. All of my cherries, Jubilee. I'll get rid of Needle because, like hell, I'm using that in a boss fight. <laughs> I, I've been kind of happy that I haven't really heard too many people defending uh, defending Needle to me. I had some defenders on Parasol, I've had some defenders on Beam, and I've definitely seen the light of those power-ups. They're a little bit better than I gave them credit for. Not so much with this one. If I'm going to be brutally honest, after that first fight with Paintra, I don't have much to add about these guys. We've just fought them all already. They're weaker than before. Not a, No new attacks to go over or anything else of note. So I'm just not going to waste your time. We're going to speed right on through these. Back to the in-between, or is this the home dimension? Hard to tell with all this dimensional swapping that we're doing all over the place. Hey, speaking of which, we swapped dimensions right there. We got some spear guys. That's okay, because I got beam. You should be afraid. Oh, you're going to get a little bit of bravery toward the end of your life? It's okay. I'll let everyone know that you died in your feet. You didn't leave on your knees. Slide down. Have a couple of bites to eat. Over this way, a few more bites. Cherry bites, all of us too. And we'll flip back up, uh, we'll flop back over. We uh, flipped over in the first place, it was flopping. I was able to cancel that projectile right there by using the dash attack, it's just really helpful. It's uh, great for using in a pinch to get some high damage. I think it, it might be the highest damaging attack that Beam has. Ah, an ice cream cone. I'll have my Gatorade beforehand. Why not? I actually don't know if that's supposed to be an energy drink or really what it's supposed to be. I've always assumed that. There's a way off to the side. Ah, oh, the parasol. Sectonian. By going down, we kill Sectoniads. Probably not an official name. It's just what I'm going with. We'll fly over this way. Shoot out of the cannon, and that kills another one of them. How could I? Giving us the one and only Sunstone in 6-4. And that takes us to wormhole number three. Guess who we're fighting? We're fighting a weaker version of the guy who we fought less than a world ago. Sorry, less than a level ago. That makes it sound even worse, given what level usually means compared to world and any other thing ever. Well, uh, you didn't take kindly to that. Oh, we haven't seen that before. It's the evil McDonald's attack is what I'm c referring to it as. That's actually really neat looking. He turns into a lava fountain. Uh, just reiterating, I can't use the slide or the air bullet to hurt a boss that only works on regular enemies or on hazards. Oh, that does mean that maybe we could try this. I was saying that you can suck in these rocks, as unbelievable as it sounds, and they hit for a lot of damage if you pull it off. During this, since I never used the other attack that I mentioned at all, it's a charge attack, which sounds great and like it would make up for the lack of damage. I don't like it because it doesn't hit for all that much despite needing to be charged, and it's also limited because it can only be fired if the feet are planted on the ground. took so long to get that last hit in. <laughs> I reiterate, that is such a violent death, especially because you hear it skewer him at the very end of it. <laughs> no one deserves that, not even the boss that gave children trouble. I'll take my tomato. My metamato, as they called it that one time and no other time ever. Uh, yes, something up top. Make that disappear like the illusion device that it is. And over this way, I'm scared to jump into any cannon, preferring to fly around and be extra safe. Rare keychain, back in the background. Found this over to the left. I was actually just supposed to jump into this in the first place. Go over that way. Oh, I trust you, level designer. You never oppressed me. And there that goes. Into one of the very last doors that we'll go through. Good! 
Great, awesome, outstanding, amazing, wonderful, excellent. Had to transition from Sonic Colors to Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door to keep that going. Gim! He's the hippest and hottest kid on the block. He got himself a Dunkin', yo! Somehow I sound less lame than the last time I tried to sound all hip and young. Uh, Sir Kibble! And our rare occasion- King DDD Drawing! I'm sorry, but he's a hunk! They're doing the- these artists are doing the impossible. And that takes us to the heart of the enemy base. Let's do it. Let's take this giant tomato out of the sky! Welcome to the Sectonian base. No way in, but yet another wormhole. We've gotten all too used to seeing these. And I have to say, their final fortress doesn't disappoint. At least they made sure that the beginning and very end of the... I'm so sorry your wings hadn't grown in yet and you were relegated to being an archer. At least they made sure that this last area had a good beginning and very end. Even if the stuff in the middle kind of sucked, I'm at least glad for that. This whole gem aesthetic looks so imposing, yet beautiful at the same time. Those gems in the background look almost like constellations, and... Oh yeah, we've rescued Cuteness Incarnate. This rather Sprixy Kingdom-looking creature is someone that we have heard a lot about all throughout our journey. Kirby Triple Deluxe's story is told largely through subtext and pause menus, but it's something that you might miss if you're not paying ample attention to everything, shall we say. This fortress is completely open-ended. It's a lot like a Metroidvania-style Kirby, a lot like Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, actually. And I have a set order that I want to go through it in, starting with wormhole number three. These people are known as the People of the Sky. They've been mentioned before, having built the ruins that Wild World was. Uh, the Coily Rattler was their guardian deity and seemingly it got taken over by some sort of uh, robotics that caused it to go haywire, foreshadowing to the fact that the people of the sky are in trouble and it's the Sectonians or some sort of invader that are to blame. You could also maybe see the Sectonians as some technologically advanced alien species with this base the way it is and everything, um, as they invaded the sky first and now are moving down to the surface world, getting close to dreamland. It's fantastic to tell a story like this through subtext for a platformer. I, I like it a lot. Um, I think it is the way that you do a story for the for a game like this. And again, it's something that's very video game. Uh, oh, uh, I have to hit that one more time, don't I? Uh, please uh, get it. Please get it. Please get it. Don't mess it up. Okay. Uh, am I still good? Am I still good? Am I still good? I don't want to destroy that one. I don't think. Do I? Uh, maybe I do. Uh, this is so confusing! Every time I think I'm done, I'm not! Uh, okay, all right, uh, well. Hopefully I can go up, please. No, you're just gonna gate me with an invisible wall even though that's clearly open? I'll be right back. I'm doing a lot better this time around. Uh, we'll break down that middle one, go down. Floor was blocking me there, but I can destroy these two. Get out of the way of the bombs. Go down, there's where the key is. We have to hop into the foreground and then we have to blow up all of this mess if we're gonna get in. Prioritizing the ones that are absolutely necessary. First, of course, eating burgers while firing a cannon sounds like something that could only happen from the mines that gave us Earthbound. We'll hop back into the background. Not doing short hops, please. Slot the key right into place and that is Sunstone number one. Huh, maybe the way I'm going about it is the cannon order. I didn't really think of it like that, I just kind of wanted it. Uh, I'm thinking... I'm thinking crash. I want to use a veritable cornucopia of power-ups. 
You see, that's how these people know that I'm on their side. They're plant people. And cornucopias are... Well, I guess it's kind of their disembodied offspring all put together into one for people to devour. Uh, not a good analogy, I'm sorry. You, you have to you have to think about how offensive you're being to other cultures when you're meeting aliens. It can be very easy to be offensive to them, especially when they're plant people. That just sort of reminds me about how I used to joke about how in Sonic X, Tails traveled the entire galaxy and the only person who would love him was a plant person. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I always thought that was really silly, I don't know. I, it's been on my mind because I saw clips from that show earlier today and it brought back some, some admittedly a few good memories though, but some not so good ones as well. It's a really weird show. Uh, gonna go into the background. I guess Kirby just makes me think of that because it was kind of on at the same time and I watched those two shows together a lot when I was younger. And speaking of that, I have had defenders coming out of the woodwork for the Kirby anime and I will say, I don't think it's really a great show. I watched a few episodes, decided it wasn't really my thing anymore, but it does have some great episodes. The one where DDD makes his own cartoon is pretty is pretty spectacular, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Didn't get full power out of that right there. My thumb slipped off of the B button, but it's okay. Uh, he'll give us plenty of opportunities to attack us because that's kind of what Bonkers does. He makes a lot of high impact stuff. You're gonna spin in the background. You're gonna make a tornado all around yourself. Well, good thing for me, that doesn't hurt me. Only you were fatter and more out of shape. That would have uh, been bad for you. Yes, barely grazed the realistic toes you got there. Suck it in and give me hammer. Oh, I'm so glad I'm getting to use this one more time. I'm trying to check under these because they hide collectibles underneath these diamonds. There is a green one at some point that I'm on the lookout for. Swallowing my pride, I'm going to squash these cute, cute bugs. Look at them in the background there. They look so adorable. I don't know why. They're, they're some of my favorite looking bug characters I've ever seen. <laughs> Whoa, didn't see you there, buddy. Sorry, coming through. Down in front. <laughs> that gives us that. We want to make sure that anytime that there's a door, to take that before going after the people of the sky, as rescuing the people of the sky will always, always, always kick us out of a session and uh, kick, kick us out of a section and make that... um make the uh, wormhole permanently disappear. That's going over there. This is the only rope that can reach over that far. Uh, I guess I moved it out of the way just barely too soon. It has to go all the way to the right. There's only one rope that reaches that way, so it has to be that one. I'm gonna say the middle one next. Get that up there. We have to, I understand. Boy, this sure is confusing. And then we get. We start with the right because it's the only one that reaches over onto the pathway that it has to start on. We save the left one for later because that's the one that actually makes the cannon fire. We shift over to the left very quickly. Not that quickly. Left one, go all the way over. It reaches onto that. Go all the way right. At least you can't mess up doing it 100% in the other direction. We've saved this one for last so it can actually make the cannon fire and Kirby can blast off once again. I feel almost like it would have taken less time to chip away that rock with my hammer. That drops us into this compartment, getting a sunstone. Is it gonna be number two? Yes, it is. Didn't intend it that way. I just have played this place a lot. This is one of the more fun places to go through, so I really didn't mind playing through it multiple times to get all the collectibles, because on a first try with it being so open-ended, you can't use the clues of, oh, this is sunstone number three, so I've missed one and two. With it being so open-ended, the sunstones could realistically be anywhere, and I remember it took me a lot of times to get all the keychains, get everything about it. Uh, we'll go through number four. Another dual layer room. So first off, there is, I believe it's right around here. There are diamonds in this place that I want to be careful with. You guys are pretty good flyers for being based on little old Brano Bird. Thought you were based on a uh, Birdon. 
but not the case. There's the keychain back there. Here's a red diamond. We can pound that with a stick. That's why I wanted to pick up hammer. And from going under, there's ye red keychain. Re red keychain? Rare keychain, not red keychain. Red diamond, red keychain, you know. There's our regular normal keychain. And I think I'm gonna stick with hammer for right now. We've used beetle lately. Though it would be kind of rocking to beat these guys with their own image, not gonna lie. There's a certain level of swagger involved in doing so that's always nice. Searched it top to bottom, underneath every single gem and beyond, didn't find anything else. A rescue old tomato top. Let's see, tomato top, uh, one in the top right can be sunny. I think I'll call you uh, Buckenberry, which I recently found it is the official name of the blue toad in the new Super Mario Bros. series, which is amazing, and I demand that he be referred to that, uh, be referred to exclusively as that until the end of time. Please get on that, Nintendo. Never call him Blue Toad again. And these are back, though a little less hand-shaped than before. They're panels that push you into the foreground, stealing your power up instantly. Can we go down below that? No, we can't. Gonna wait for that to pass over. It's okay, while I'm waiting for you, I can pick up a keychain and marvel at it while uh, while we're uh, working this out. And then we move on. Hammer's gonna come in very handy. That That's it? Really, that's it? Just a keychain in this place? Okay, well that's door number one. Okay, fine. He's fat, he's purple, and he has a stem on his head. We'll call him Plump. That opens up wormhole number five. I think we can move on. I'm just trying to be very, very careful because this place is so open-ended and we only have two sunstones. There's that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven. Somewhere along the line I lost count. Counting to nine is such a challenge for me these days. Now they're just playing Tetris with us. Oh, go up. You've thought you've outsmarted these blocks, but the blocks prove that they're smarter than they look. They ain't no blockheads. We go into the one segment that doesn't kill us. There's the bottom layer. There's the upper corner. There's a hell of a lot of stuff. And then down. Gotta hover. That door looks pretty nice. This would be pretty claustrophobic for anyone else. And if uh, some technician behind the counter decided to just Pull one more lever, he could instantly have his way with us and instantly kill us. But I think I'm just gonna chill here for a little bit. Yeah, Kirby, go ahead. Take off, take a load off. You've been doing a lot saving the people of the sky, not really knowing what it was you were fighting for, just trying to get your old frenemy back. You, you've earned a reprieve. After waiting 86 seconds, H, A, L, and a new door appears. Why 86 seconds? Because you're 86 in the hell out of here. It's because Hal's Japanese name is phonetically the same as the number 86 in Japanese. It's been a uh, play on words that they have used to disguise secrets where oftentimes you have to do something 86 times uh, to access any kind of Hal room in a Kirby game. Generally, it involves going to the end of a room, going back to the start, we've seen that, or doing something 86 times, one or the other. That gives us a keychain, a Maxim Tomato. That, nothing underneath this diamond. Just the doorway forward. Well, that's a fun bonus. Break down all these blocks. I'm gonna block you, take another pointless Maxim Tomato I don't need, because I was a good little boy. And grab that. That's another keychain, that might be four of them already. And you're... 
Ethel. Because you're a grandma. And Ethel sounds like the name of a grandma that would keep flowers in her house. many people of the sky left, but we've rescued them. And in we go to the heart of the base. Unfortunately, tomatoes don't have pits, so I can't use that analogy. And wouldn't you know it, there's that, and this is it. This is where they're breeding all of those reused bosses. We must put an end to the uncreative madness that is taking place in this lab. I call upon you one final time. Hypernova Kirby, activate! We'll do all we can to suffer another great final world in a Kirby game from suffering the same fate as this one. Oh, hey, more people up the sky. Good. Maybe their population numbers aren't as low as I thought. You also have the theming of plant people being infested with bug people. It makes sense. With Hypernova Kirby, mid-bosses go down in but a single blow, though they give you some pretty hefty gas afterward. Wielding such power does not come without consequences. It's to be expected. Blocky! <laughs> Literally, that's the sound I made after beating you. <laughs> we'll rescue you, breaking them all out of prison. No more flowers in the Hooskow. And this is Mr. Frosty Dicks, as he is the alternate coloration. In fact, I think they're all the Dicks versions. Oh. <laughs> Crushing you with a symbol of your, of your people. Uh, that gives me another way forward, whereas that down there looked more like an optional pathway, so we'll go back down. This is a two- oh, that's a two-way. Yeah, I should absolutely take this. Take Sunstone number... Three. Good. Going under this, that's a pretty well-hidden one-up that you might not think to look for. We'll go back into the background. And I'm just so glad that this got one last hoorah. This base is great. It's making good use of the multiplayer gameplay that I think is Triple Deluxe's main identity. It does such good stuff with this whole 3D slash 2D platforming, enemies attacking from the foreground and background. We're all getting to see it one last time, and then we have Hypernova thrown in for one last new section where we get to use it in a way that we've never used it before. And then all the while, it's a great big open place where we have all sorts of objectives that we can complete in any order. This is a good final Kirby stage. Boy, do I love it. I don't think we've actually seen Gigantedge Dicks before. We take him out. Proven that even if we did fight him normally, he'd be no match for us. Because his armor is made out of gold. What did you expect, buddy? Gold is a horrible metal for making durable things out of. In this segment, there are Mr. Wheelie Dixes everywhere. We don't want to deal with their nuts, so we're not going to do that. We instead just want to... Suck down every single one of them. Oh, hey, all six five sunstones collected. I get to drop this topic for something much more uncursed. Below this one, three stars. Not as exciting as the previous sunstone. They burned up all their resources and making the last one as exciting as it could be. I commend you for making my life feel good and giving me the motivation that I needed to carry on. Since we're at the end, not much more vote motivation is needed now. We'll just rescue this guy. Taking you punks in! Some epic gas that made me shoot stars out of my ass. And there it is. The Warp Star! Twirled with joy as it was happy to see us. Flowery Woods, I want you to know that I have beaten you twice now. I am more powerful than ever. There's nothing new about you. Do you see this? Do you see this face, this nonchalantness that I am displaying before you right now? Do you know how much power is within my bowels at this moment? Do you know how much of you I am able to take through my mouth and then later push out of my ass in about four seconds flat? Do you know what you are? Nothing! empty it no longer exists oh 
Aw, they all came back to cheer us on. That's it. Four keychains, four sunstones, hypernova, done. Pixel perfect! Couldn't ask for a better finish to a better place. The rare keychain is the golden egg statue of HAL Laboratories, which is fitting as it was found in a HAL room. The tick. Actually does have the powers of a tick as it pokes you and makes you bleed. Como we've already gotten, not too long ago actually, and Coozer. Hey, you coos, you lose. Angel Kirby, which we've already had. Oh, I have more because I had a street pass, that's right. Pawn and Con from Kirby's Dream Land 3. I don't know too much about these characters, actually. I think they were kind of side game characters in that one. Dream Land 3 is one I'm not ultra familiar with. I've gone through it once, just it's been a while. <laughs> with all seven stones assembled. And with many more assembled. It's time. Next time on Kirby Triple Deluxe, we confront Taranza at the height of the stratosphere to reunite with Deity. See you guys then.